Right People, Right Places, Right Plan, the book by Jensen Franklin, focusing on discerning the voice of God. Tonight our presenter is our very own neighbor minister here. We love her so. I will read a short biographical snapshot of her for those who do not know her. Minister Cheryl Stewart is an associate minister serving God's people at Bethlehem Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia, where Reverend Dr. Darrell K. White is positioned as senior pastor. Minister Stewart is the lead teacher and spiritual advisor for the BBC Women's Ministry, a church school teacher and also currently serves as the administrative coordinator for the BBC Associate Ministers Council. Minister Stewart is a native of Baton Rouge and the mother of two number one sons and the blessed and proud manna of six wonderful grandchildren. Oh my goodness. Currently, Minister Stewart is pursuing the Master of Divinity degree at John Leland Center for Theological Studies in Arlington, Virginia. There are many scriptures that could be described as favorites. However, the one she hangs her hat on is Philippians 3.12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. That is who she is according to the snapshot. I'm also a native of New Orleans, Louisiana. So she's my homegirl. Okay. But I still have to get on her schedule for some of this mean gumbo she makes. Oh. As I share my pralines with her. So nevertheless, I will present to some and introduce the others, Minister Cheryl Stewart, who will now come forth with our next pre presentation of our book, Right People, Right Places, Right Plan. Give her a hand when she comes to the board. Thank you so much. We are excited to hear the teacher. <laughs> Welcome. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hmm. When I came in, we were in the middle of a awesome worship, and I always like to start with the praise, so I will bless the Lord at all times, and Amen. his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. And usually right here I say, when you're looking at me like that, and you're not doing anything I said, I said, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt the Lord, his name together. Hallelujah. 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 God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Yes, As we all know, that um, is my uh, assignment this evening to share insights uh, God gave me concerning the four components or chapters of part one of our book, Right People, Right Place, Right Plan, by author Pastor Jensen Franklin. I like him a lot. He tells a story <laughs> about fasting, and now I'll move on, but he tells a story about fasting where he said that uh, when you're fasting, you should not watch television, especially commercials. He was fasting one time, and, and uh, just before he went to bed, he saw a uh, Pizza Hut commercial. <laughs> and he said that in the middle of the night, he woke up with a mouthful of pillow because he thought he was having pizza. <laughs> I love him. I love him. So, as I said, my assignment this evening is to share insights that God gave me concerning the four components or chapters of part one, the gift of discernment. And so wait, you may be saying, I was not here last week, but I saw uh, some snippets of uh, the presentation, and that's a, a tough act to follow, but here we are. Didn't last week's presenter cover this? Yes, she did, and she did it in a most excellent way. However, please allow me to share this with you. Last Sunday at our church, we heard an awesome sermon from a passage of scripture. This past Sunday, a different preacher used the same scripture, and he shared this illustration. 
He said a young boy went to the refrigerator to look for something to eat because he was hungry. Inside the refrigerator, he found one lonely ham bone with no visible meat, signs of meat. Later, he asked his mom what was for dinner. She answered, they were having ham. Oh? Huh? He looked at her and said, Mom, there's no meat on that bone. His wise mother replied, there's plenty of meat on that bone. It just depends on how you slice it. He sliced it just right. And God was glorified and the people of God were blessed again by the same scripture from a different preacher. Mm -hmm. So I am here to slice the meat a little differently for you tonight. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the Cindy Dennis Ministries. We thank you for the women who are gathered here. And we thank you for those who are sharing with us on Facebook. God, let me decrease as you increase all of thee and none of me. And you be glorified and your people will be helped. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Diacrisis, D-I-A-K-R-I-S-I-S. This is a Greek word for discernment. The word describes being able to distinguish, discern, judge, or appraise a person, a statement, situation, or an environment. So chapter one of this book <clears throat> talks about your internal compass. So I believe it's safe to say that we are familiar with a compass and what it does. However, for our purposes this evening, let's just define compass. A compass is an instrument used for navigation and orientation that shows direction relative to the geographic points or geographical position. Simply put, it tells us where north, south, east, and west are. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Before the invention or discovery of the compass, wanderers and travelers could only look around and set their course by the physical markings around them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had no idea that there was an internal force which was the Earth's magnetic field that influenced a small piece of iron that was the original navigational tool. Mm -hmm. Author, um, Pastor uh, Jenston Franklin says this, inside every believer, that means all of us, because we all believers, right, amen? Mm -hmm. amen? Inside every believer, ordinary and extraordinary, there is a compass, an internal force placed by God. I call this God's profound attention to detail. God knows what we need when we need it. He knows all we will need for our journey, and he makes sure we are equipped for our life's journey. We come here with all we need to bring God glory. As a shout out or a nod to sea travelers, Franklin further states that when we learn to utilize and trust the valuable resource we are better able to navigate the stormy seas and cloudy skies of life. We're better able to forgive. As we listen to the Holy Spirit, we're better able to walk this out as we follow the promptings of our internal compass. Life is ever changing and there are constant decisions to be made daily. Some are large and life altering some small and not so important, but necessary nonetheless. However, the fact remains we make decisions daily, even no decision is a decision. How many people know that? Because yeah. you've decided not to, not to decide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we decide to do nothing to address the matter at hand, and that could be costly. That, however, is not my assignment tonight. Moving on, now, you do understand that God cares about everything that concerns us. How wonderful Amen. is that? Psalm 138, 8 lets us know that God will perfect that which concerns us or fulfill his purpose for us. He has to be engaged and active in our lives for that to happen. In Psalm 57, 2 through 3, we're made wonderfully aware that the Most High God performs all things for us. We are made <clears throat> He will send from heaven to save us. He cares. There's a song, uh, Reckless Love. He will leave the 99 and come and get you. He cares for us. Sometimes we don't 
feel like he does because God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts and he does not handle us like we handle our friends and he doesn't handle us how like we handle him. Lord help. Amen. So, in his profound attention to detail, God made a way for us not to have to figure things out for ourselves and look to uncertain conditions around us. He provided that internal compass to help us navigate our lives. The internal compass, of course, is the Holy Spirit, the very spirit and voice of God within us, the very spirit and voice of God within me, the very spirit and voice of God within you, and you, and you, each of us. Without learning to trust and depend on the voice of God in the person of the Holy Spirit, we are left to look around and set the course by our own human emotions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hunches, and the voices of those who would want to influence our journey. Hmm. How many know that God says, I will have no other gods before me? And if you allow other voices to direct your paths, they stand in the way of God. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's up to including your most loved favorite son. Favorite number one son. It's hard to hear. <laughs> By the power of his Holy Spirit, God has given us all we need to set the course for our lives. We can trust the Spirit to lead us to the right people, the right places, and the right plan for the purpose of achieving his perfect will for our lives. What if we could stop saying something told me? and recognize as well as acknowledge that it was the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. our internal compass who gave us wisdom and insight. I am by no means advocating we get so spiritual and deep, so heavenly minded that we are no earthly good. Let there be a balance. Let there be a balance, my sisters and you who are listening and tuning in. I've recently gained new insight as it pertains to the scripture that records Paul's instruction to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy 1, 6. And it says, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying, of my, laying on of my hands. Stir up the gift, my friends. The Holy Spirit is the gift of God who will lead you into all truth. He is able, and I dare say willing, to lead us to the right people, right place, and right plan as we learn to discern his voice, the internal compass, the enemy of your soul, the enemy of my soul, Satan. He knew, <clears throat> our book shares, that if he was going to defeat the human race, he had to separate man from the voice of God. He's still on his job. That's what he does. Today he still uses the same strategy to do whatever he can to get us to listen to his voice instead of to the voice of God. He's uh, well, sly and shady and slick mm -hmm. and come in the guise of an angel kind, L looks good, mm -hmm. smells good, mm -hmm. probably is not good, looking too good to be true. Mm -hmm. Today, beloved, the voice of God has got to be louder than the voice of enemy, of the enemy in our lives. The voice of God has got to be louder than the voice of the enemy in our lives. While it is true that sometimes we miss it for whatever reason, John 10, 35 reminds us that as <clears throat> us, as his sheep know his voice, and we will not follow another. Check to be sure it is the voice of the Holy Spirit before we move. Not always easy, but I believe the Spirit will help us to become more adept and astute about recognizing his voice. Learning to be sensitive to the voice of God is critical to every facet of your life. However, obedience when you actually hear from God is the real test, especially as if it's something that you don't think you want to do because God will ask us to do things that we think that we don't want to do or we don't think we know we don't want to do it. But how many know that God, there is no plan better than God's plan? You cannot go to God and say, God, how about this? How about we do it like that? You can, but he probably will not respond because God knows what's best for us. The author of this book, our first presenter, and I 
ask the twofold relevant question. That's a preacher thing, the relevant question. <laughs> can, you, can God trust you with what he says to you? That's a Selah moment. Pause and think about that. Can God trust you? I always tell the women of the BBC Women's Ministry, God has to be able to trust you. He reveals his secrets. He tells you things, but he has to be able to trust you with what he shares with you. And you have to be trustworthy with what your sister or your friend shares with you. I like the saying that says you cannot. You, you need to be a woman, or, a, or in this case a woman, who will straighten another woman's crown and not let the world know that it was crooked. Mm -hmm. He's got to be able to trust you. You have to be trustworthy. And will you trust him when you cannot see his hand at work and move forward believing that through your obedience you can stand in miracle territory? Mm -hmm. What is it like to stand in miracle territory? Miracle signs and wonders. We sing about miracle signs and wonders. We sing about standing under an open heaven. But what would you do if you were presented with an open heaven? What would you do? Hmm. Can God trust you with what he says to you? God has given every ordinary believer an extraordinary gift. He has given you an internal compass to guide and discern things about your children, your spouse, your family, your career, and your finances. Not human wisdom, beloved. This discernment is from God. Mm -hmm. So we move now to chapter two, a feel for the real, <laughs> discerning God's voice. Oh, it's a joyous time. It is a prosperous time in Israel. Everybody had lots to eat, great clothes to wear, money in their pockets. Wow, Israel was living large. Hallelujah. No worries at all. How many know that when we live at large, we really don't, sometimes we don't think about God. We don't think about that he is the reason why we are living large. He is the reason why we can do what we do and how we do it. Amen? Amen. However, in the midst of letting the good times roll, shout out to my Louisiana roots. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Israel began to backslide. Hmm. Pastor, prophet Hosea warned them with these words. Therefore, I, God, will be to Ephraim like a moth. That would be Hosea 5.12. But as they apparently did not heed this prophetic warning, God said this, for I, God, will be like a lion to Ephraim. He said a stronger word. It meant this, if you will be receptive and obedient to the Holy Spirit's voice when God wants to guide or correct your course. He will never hit you with anything more powerful than a moth. However, if you are insensitive and resistant to his voice, he will come to you like a lion. I'm reminded of a story that illustrates this point. A few years ago, a popular preacher shared this moth-lion concept. He was at a revival with a popular evangelist. This preacher heard the Lord gently say to him, get on your knees. He began to protest to the Lord that he did not want to be disruptive and take the focus off the, of the evangelist. We just said that there's no plan better than God's plan. God always knows. And what we try to explain why we're trying to be respectful when actually we're trying to be in charge and we don't want to do what it is God, he said. So he said quietly, like I said, he said, get on your knees. And you know how we do, but God this, but God that. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, <laughs> the Lord spoke yet yeah, loudly. Yes, he roared, get on your knees right now. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, <laughs> the preacher who was protesting instead of obeying got immediately to his knees. You don't know what God is planning when he tells you to do certain things. You just obey quickly. And that story was funny to me because the, because the Lord said, get on your knees right now in a southern twang from Texas. <laughs> and that's made it so funny. And if you think about that real hard, you will know who I'm talking about, but we're going to move on. I'm not going to mention any names here. <clears throat> the story made me laugh by the way it was told. However, I did understand that when God speaks, it's not just to hear himself talk. And he expects us to obey. 
if the God of the universe, the creator God, has deemed it necessary to speak to you personally, you need to sit up and pay attention. Amen. You need, that's an honor for God to speak to you. It's an honor to feel God's manifest presence. I read something the other day that says sometimes God remains anonymous. So we don't see him and we don't hear him all the time, but he is always there. God, we love you tonight. <clears throat> when we don't follow the general leadings of the word of God and the Holy Spirit, we grow insensitive. Say insensitive insensitive to his presence so by now you probably would love to know how to activate this discernment in your own life pastor franklin relates the story which spoke volumes to me <clears throat> there was a u.s treasury officer who had the job of identifying counterfeit dollar bills he said that the key to identifying a false bill Pay attention. The secret to identifying a false bill is to spend hours and hours handling the real thing. Hallelujah. Simply put, you have to get a feel for the real if you want to identify the fake. Mm -hmm. As we spend time with God, praying and studying his word, we, he will, <clears throat> we will develop a feel for the voice of God. As in any relationship, we know the voice of our parents, our children, our close friends, even famous persons who we don't personally know, if we hear them enough, you get a feel for their sound. You understand. We get a feel for the real as we intentionally study God's attributes and his ways. Then we are more able to distinguish the real from the fake or from the voice of the enemy. Get the feel for the real by spending time in worship, prayer, and study. Get the feel for the real, saints. Get the feel for the real, my friends. Spend time with God. You know the real thing. You know some of you drink Coca-Cola, some of you drink Pepsi. And those who are Coca-Cola fans, they know the difference between a Coke and a Pepsi because they've spent time drinking and consuming copious amounts of either one. Consume copious amounts of the presence of God. Get a feel for the real. Chapter three, the nod of God, discerning God's will. God's promise, or his promises in Psalm 32, eight and nine to it. <clears throat> he promises to instruct us, he promises this, to instruct us and to teach us in the way we should go. He promises to guide us with his eye. One of my dear friends used to say that we should remain in lockstep with God. We don't move unless he moves. In other words, the nod of God says to be sure we have his okay or stamp of approval regarding next moves or next steps. Wait for the witness in your spirit as you have been sitting with him. Ask of God. The word says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you did not know. That would be Jeremiah 33, 3. It is worth it, my friends, to ask of God because he has promised to answer. And he promises in his, I mean, he answers in his own way because he is God. He created the language. So we don't have to tell God how to answer. We don't have to suggest to him what, uh, what to do because God is God. And he always will be God. There used to be a song that said that. He is our creator and king. He is amazing. He is omnipotent. He is large and in charge. He is the big baller, shot caller. Hallelujah. Amen. He is, he is. And God is not mad at me because I called him the big baller, the shot caller. Because all the language you have is the words that you hear. And he can look at your heart and see what you mean by what you say. Yeah. I said that to, in a class, a couple of classes, and maybe looked at me. I'm like, no, he is the big ball of shot caller. That means he is large and in charge, mm -hmm. and I'm on his side. Mm -hmm. I want to be on. Don't you want to be on his side? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Finally, I'm the one. This is the place, and now is the time. You are the one, beloved child of God. Now is the, uh, uh, you are the one. This is the place wherever God has planted you to work 
and now is the time. I stop by to tell you that you are the one who can make a difference in your sphere of influence. Your sphere of influence is the place, and now is the hour. This hour is the time. Now is the time for you to decide that you love your God, you want to know him better, and you want to do exploits in the kingdom for him. We have got to come to a place in our lives where we believe God ridiculously. One time God told me to believe him ridiculously because people will deign to say, oh, God will not do that. I'm like, well, did he tell you he wouldn't do it? So we need to believe God. I believe God has said to people, such faith I've not seen in all of Israel. When you believe for healing, raising the dead, those kinds of things, when you talk to Jesus, now is the time for you to decide. Get to know him because you want to do exploits. You want to come to a place where you believe him ridiculously and trust him to use you to do the impossible in the earth realm. When we limit what, we, what can happen to only what we think is possible, and we do that. How many are guilty of that? Well, what we think is possible because we relegate him to our human uh, sensibilities. We completely eliminate God from the equation, and we are and we restrict our purpose to only that which is possible in the natural. My friends, do not say like Moses, send someone else. You are the one. My God, you are the one who will carry out the Great Commission. You are the one who will preach the word in season and out of season. You are the one who will call right right and wrong, wrong. In this place is where you will declare war on the enemy of our souls. You are the one who will do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. How long and how many people have to die before you stand up and take your best? The Spirit of the Lord asked Isaiah, who can we send and who will go for us? And what was his response? Here am I. Send me. You are the one, my sisters, because I say sisters because that's who's in this room. You are the one, my friends who are, who are tuning in. You are the one who will make a difference in the earth realm at this time. You have been created for such a time as this. And with you and God are the majority. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God a great praise. Amen. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Stand to your feet and give God a great praise. Give God a great, great praise. Give God a great praise. Give God a great praise because he is worthy. And he says right now, right here, right now, now is the time. You are the one. Not just me. You, 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 you. You are the one. And you. Now is the time. Yes. Now is the place. God bless you. Well, there you go. Louisiana in the house. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed that word from Minister uh, Cheryl Stewart. Uh, it's been just uh, a progressive uh, thinking about this right place, right? people right plan and as we delve more into it with our, our next two presenters I'm sure we won't reach the bottom of it but we'll definitely have a better uh, discernment of what God is doing in our lives and she was speaking at least at the end part there you are the one you know that, that's the key thing and we are the righteousness of God and as I look at her scripture she she so dearly loves Philippians 3 12 again it reads not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ just has laid hold of me. Amen. And amazingly, so I just heard the scripture yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and she's parallel to other scriptures. My pastor taught on it, and she spoke on a topic apprehended. And she broke that down with that lay hold. Amen. Uh, being apprehended by Christ Jesus, laying hold, and, and of course, you know, tasting him with that sincere love. So, we hope that uh, you join us next Monday for our third presenter. 
I won't be here to, on an introductory level, but we shall go forth with our next presenter again. Right people, right places, right plan, right Jensen Franklin. Thank you.